Welcome back to Diary.io. My name is Diary Olu from Liar and I'm your loyal mentor. Alright, what if you don't have a laptop that's got 16 gig of RAM or 8 gig of RAM and the CPU configuration is just too weak? And to make it worse, you don't even have 1500 up to 2500 bucks to get a new laptop. And you really want to do this Linux DevOps mentorship uh, program? Well, our hope is not lost. That's why I want to show you how to take advantage of AWS public cloud solution to get virtual machines running in a matter of minutes. Now let's get right into it. To get started, first of all, you need to go to aws.amazon.com and create a new account. Navigate to my account, click on the AWS management console. And what you want to do is create a new account. So click on the create a new AWS account button. Let's fill out this form with basic information. For example, email address. So let's say testing at diary.io, which I'm pretty sure doesn't exist already. And the password has to be uh, very strong. As you can see there, eight or more characters and a few other conditions to make it a strong password. So I'm just going to put on my very, very, very strong password there. And AWS account name, let's say test diary, something like that. And you would be given this other contact information form and you what you want to do is select the personal uh, because with professional you get to pay more there's a like a subscription model for professional accounts so you want to select the personal and put in your telephone number and select your country i'm in the united kingdom at the moment put in your address city state postal code and check that after filling up that information the next page you can see here is the payment information and what this means is because it's a public cloud and you're making use of another organization's IT infrastructure essentially that's what you're doing you have to pay for the time that you use the servers and you know basically at the moment don't worry too much because AWS has a free tier which you will pretty much use their infrastructure without paying anything but you have to be careful to always stop your virtual machines otherwise they charge per hour and for every use you get to pay for it so they tend to keep your card on file so that when that happens they can easily take the information and I don't need to put in my card because I already have an AWS account but you do that and potentially they're also gonna call you to confirm the phone number that you have put into it once you get all this set up you pretty much have your AWS account and I'll show you what it looks like when we do sign in once you have your account created successfully what you need to do is come to my account there AWS management console and select the root user and just put in your email address put in mine direct at direct.io and I'm going to put my password once you log in this is basically what you see now bear in mind there are so many AWS services and you do not need to worry about everything right now we just want to focus on one which is EC2 so you type EC2 in this search box right here and you, as you can see virtual servers in the cloud select that and we get into the part of the application that is specific to EC2 instances. To some people, EC2 means elastic cloud compute. To some other people, it means elastic compute cloud. But whatever which one you go for, this the two there basically is the two double C's basically. So elastic cloud compute, elastic compute cloud, E N C C. So EC2. And each virtual machine is called an instance so you would hear things a lot like ec2 instances so if i create one virtual machine of ubuntu os that is an instance of an ec2 all right so let me quickly show you how to get one up and running so on the left as you can see there are a number of things you need to um, click on to get into all the different uh, services provided by aws as far as ec2 is concerned but i'm just going to go into the ec2 instances just the instances and i want to launch an instance what i'm going to do there's a search box here where i can uh, type in ubuntu but before i do that i want to select free tier only so i don't want to get an instance where i have to pay there are a number of options like that and I don't want to get into all the details because that's beyond the scope of this video now there are a couple of options here uh, as at the time of this recording there is Ubuntu server LTS for 20.04 I'm gonna go with that one why not 
Now, the instance type basically means the type of instance in terms of the resources that instance has. So resources like the virtual CPUs and the memory and the storage, instance storage and as you can see optimized, whether it's optimized or not as far as our EBS is concerned. Now I'm not going to go into all of that, like I said before, this is way beyond the scope. I'm just going to focus on the type here and as you can see t2.micro is a free tier eligible instance type. If you select this all you get is one virtual CPU and one memory, one gig of memory and what that means is if your whatever you're trying to do on that virtual machine requires more resources you won't be able to do much with this because you know it doesn't have much but it's free so if you really do want something much more powerful than that then you need to select either t2 t, uh, small medium large and there are a couple of options there which you can go through but for the sake and uh, for the purpose of what we're trying to do t2.micro is good enough for us all right so let's go so here you just need to click on next if you want to go straight into launching it you can just click on review and launch right away but I don't want to do that I want to go to next so I can show you all the different configuration options that there are and when we go next here you can see the next one is number three which is configure instance the next one is add storage add tags configure security groups and then review but we're not going straight to review so let's go to the next now I'm gonna leave most of the th uh, things here at the default setting which is good enough for what we're trying to do okay so if I wanted to launch more than one I can specify I don't know if I wanted 200 instances 2000 yeah I'm not gonna mess about with AWS with this one but you get you get the point so one number of EC2 instance next is to configure the storage uh, also I'm gonna leave everything here as default just make sure that delete and termination is checked right there 8 gig that's good enough for now tags I'm not putting anything there and security group just make sure you select the next one the, op, uh, the other one the reason for that is because every time you create a new instance it creates a new security group for you now what security group means is just a way to control the traffic that comes into your uh, virtual machine we get into all of that when we get to the AWS course as part of this DevOps mentorship program but then uh, I don't want to create a new security group I'm just gonna select an existing one okay it says select an existing security group now there's always a default one as you can see the name there that says default that's what I want to use and with this default it basically has everything open to the world every can connect to this as long as you have the credential to get in so there's no firewall rules that says oh you can't get in based on this port or you know whatnot so I'm gonna leave that as it is if we have any problem we can always go into uh, the security group to change the configuration okay we have everything set up and I'm just gonna launch this right here it's asking me if I have uh, if I want to create a new key pair or not now we will get into SSH in the next couple of videos but all you need to worry about right now is that you need to create a new key pair because we're gonna need that and you can just name it let's say diary easy to okay and make sure you download that because without it you will never be able to get into the EC2 instance. All right, click on launch. Now you can see, click on the launch log. Here it says successful. And this is the instance ID. Every EC2 instance has an ID. So if I click on that, it takes me to the uh, instance. Previously, this was empty, but now we have something because we've just created an EC2 instance. Now, a couple of things here. There are a number of columns here, and one of the most important ones I want you to see is the public IP. Take note, every time you bring up an EC2 instance, it assigns a public IP to it, and that's what you need to get into the machine. But take note as well that when you turn off the virtual machine, this IP address doesn't exist anymore it goes away and when you bring it back up the IP address would have changed and at that time you have to use the new IP address to get in so don't get um, lost into thinking that this is forever gonna be yours if you switch this computer off it's going off as well okay now how do we get into this all right status checks it's initializing that's cool but if you click on actions after having checked this box to say I want to connect to this particular 
instance click on actions you would see a number of options and here there is the connect option there and this is pretty much going to give you exact command you need to copy to connect to your instance and if you notice it says ubuntu at this long name here and part of this long name is the ip address uh, let me see if I can move this yeah so right here you can see 3.23.114.44 is the IP address and in the DNS name it has 3-23-144-44 so you know this is you can either connect with the DS, DNS name or the IP address okay I'm just gonna copy this and take note as well the uh, key pair we generated this is the name we gave to it as you can see right here uh, Dare ec 2 pem that's what was downloaded and we're gonna need that to connect as well okay um, before I close this box you might want to read this as well just in case you have any issues getting into the virtual machine you might want to run this command on your terminal uh, just to change the permissions and again we're gonna get into all of these in detail very soon but for now just copy and paste and you're good to go okay so I'm gonna close this and we will connect to our virtual machine let's refresh this it looks like it's still initializing let's refresh this good we have all the checks completed and we're good to go in the next video i'm going to show you how to connect to this virtual computer so whether you're on a mac os or on a windows 10 or whatever operating system you're using we still need to be able to figure out how to get into this vm and that's what the next video is going to be about if you like this video click on the like button to stay up to date with all the greatest and latest devops content click on the subscribe button and the notification bell and i'll see you in the next video